So now we're going to get to some of the practical things that you can do to make your job as a copy cataloger easier, more efficient. And it comes to setting up your workstation. One thing that you as a copy cataloger need to have is your own unique login. Um, so there's, there shouldn't be a cat2 account that you use and somebody else uses. I mean, it could be a cat2 account at your library, but it still is only you using it. And along with that, you are highly encouraged to set up a workstation that is distinct from a more general workstation. You can have more than one workstation set up on a computer. But you do need somebody with local admin to set that up for you. And the reason that you would have a separate one is, is so that your defaults for your copy cataloging are preserved when you use that, that workstation to log in. You'll access the workstation uh, configuration page through the administration menu, and then it is the first link there up at the top. From that page, and I'm going to go back there real quick, you can see that there are, are a lot of things on the left-hand side that really don't have anything to do with cataloging, with the exception that you may want to disable your sounds um, if you're going to be scanning in a lot of things or doing a lot of things that have these alerts. And you can also test whether those are on off the volume. The one thing that has not yet been developed and it's not a huge priority yet, yet is your sounds are either on or off. You don't get to choose um, different which ones are on and which ones are off, which is kind of a drag at times. Within, then over on the, the right hand side, within the workstation configuration page, you can set up your defaults as far as your search range, the scope of your search, and then also what page you see first within the search. It, it's recommended that for copy catalogers that you have your default search library set to Evergreen Indiana, which is that top option there, the EG hyphen IN, so that when you are searching for a record, you're searching all the available locations for that record. Then you also have the next option in the middle of the screen is the preferred library. And this is recommended that you have this set to your home location, whether it, and it could be a branch, but probably you'd like to have it set at your system level, if there are multiple branches in your system, depending on how you're cataloging. You're going to know which is most appropriate. And if you don't know, um, you can ask either somebody on your own staff or you can send an email, of course, to us at the State Library. So we recommend that you have it set to the branch or system level there, not to all of Evergreen Indiana. And the reason being for that so that you can see what, uh, what of those items or um, call numbers or whatever have already been created locally. And then the other option you have to set is your advanced search default. This is going to, this is, in my opinion, the most highly personalized thing based on your workflows and your preference. I tend to have mine set always to numeric, which we'll talk about those searches in just a second, but perhaps you do prefer the, the out of the box default is advanced search um, and that may be totally appropriate. In some cases, the mark expert search may be appropriate. It's also important to remember that you can go back and you can change this default. Say I'm going to be working on this one task that requires me to be looking up several things in the uh, 245 field. 
so I would just set my search to Mark Expert. But that's not something that I'm going to do all the time forever. More often, be after that project, I'm going to use the numeric search, and then I just go back and change that. Um, it, you don't. There's not a save button or anything. Once you select it, it is live in your your next search. Another way to customize your work flow um, when you are kind of getting into whatever your workflow is going to be for copy cataloging is to manage your grid. The grid being this, um, this screen that is characterized by columns and then as you add items in, you are then adding rows in. And, and so that is the grid. When we talk about the grid, it, it's the screen with configurable columns that provide different attributes from items or patrons, depending on what type of screen we're in. So we have the options menu, and it, it's divided into two sections. There are the actions at the top of that, and the actions being distinct from the actual actions menu. Um, this is just referring to the grid, actions for the grid, where you can manage the columns. We'll look at in a second. The width, um, there are some printing and download options. And then below that, you have the actual columns that you can have actively displayed on the screen. Those ones that have the green check mark are those which are displayed. Those that have, well, it's not a green check mark, the white check mark in the green field. And then those that have the white X in the yellow field are those columns that are not being displayed. And you just click on the X or the check to toggle back and forth between them. Making sure that once you have those columns visible that you want to use, you select save from the, the action section of the options menu. So the first one there option in that menu is manage columns. And when you click on manage columns, it opens this modal that gives you some different things that you can do here. You can select from this what which of those columns are visible. You can change their position on the screen whether and when it says first visible that means it's going to be the thing that displays furthest on the left hand side or last visible furthest on the right hand side or you can use the move up and down to decide one thing that I have not used yet, but I, I plan to play with, is the sort priority. Um, so that if there was something, generally what it's going to do is you're going to be entering things in there. In this case, it's in the item status screen. And so it's going to be um, whatever you put in there in the order that you put it in. But when you start sorting it, then you can add some more uh, nuanced behavior in there with the sort priority. In theory, I have not used it. Generally, I just scan the things in or copy paste the things in or batch load, which we'll talk about later on and deal with them as they are, or I just will sort by a column once they're in there and not worry about the other columns because it's going to uh, keep all of those records together. But we do have the manage columns. Man manage column widths, widths is one of those things that when the web client first came out was a, a bit of a stumbling block for me because I was, I was so used to using Excel and, and other applications where in order to, um, 
change the width of the columns, you either had a double headed arrow that you just kind of dragged, or you could uh, double click on that the place where the two cells were adjacent and it would just auto size based on the, the most contents in in the column or the row depending on what you were dealing with that is not the case in evergreen indiana um, because it is a website as opposed to just a downloaded application and so to change the column width which can be a really, really wonderful thing to do if you are finding that your barcodes are being cut off, that you have no idea what that author's name is because the column is too small, especially if you're perhaps on a laptop screen where everything gets a little bit shrunk in, shrunken, um, to go in and actually manage the column widths. And you can see that you have those options in there to expand or shrink the column width. It is important to keep in mind that every time you make a change to your grid, you always go back to the options menu and you select save columns. Whereas in the workstation configuration page, you just select a thing and it automatically was saved and everything was happy. That is not the case with the grid. So you have to go back and make sure that you save it. Now say you forgot to save it after a thing and you still have the configurations in there. You make a couple other changes. When you save it, all of the changes that um, are still visible on your screen would be saved. Some other options that you have there, you can reset them to the default so it gets rid of all of you, those customizations, goes back to your default visible columns, uh, goes back to the default width, goes back to the default order. So you could do the reset. You can download all of those things that are visible to a CSV that you can then open in a spreadsheet software, or you could look at a CSV in Notepad if you wanted. It'd be pretty ugly though. Uh, or you can actually print that visible grid from that menu as well.